and Liquid constantly have to react to them. And then from there, psychological advantage is established. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Radiant team ban. I think, yeah, just the biggest thing, you have to just walk out last game, and then I'm wondering if they want to go for the same style, because we couldn't see the style of last game come into play just because of the pick. Do they want to kind of go for that global ganking strategy? I think it could have worked out if they didn't get last pick Huskart. So I don't think the draft was too bad up until then. Uh, they could have put a lot of pressure onto the, onto the Miracles SF last game with the Spirit Breaker, but... This time it's going to be on Radiant side. I'm just very feel f fearful now for Liquid. They really need a, a good solid way to stop that SF. And Tuscar and Jarocopter, great team fight control, great damage, great safety in the picks. It's it feels like a better start than less tunnel draft. Like when you get something like a Wisp, like you're forced into that kind of combo. But, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit more open for them, but Radiant there it is, Fly Stazzle down. once again, and Haskar Bank coming up in the second phase from Liquid. That's like the least surprising pick ever. They're always going to take it second. Like, you, yeah. you pretty much just expect it. They run it so well, no team has really figured it out. Like, some teams at the Major started banning it first phase, which isn't unheard of, but... You wonder if it's almost worth it for Team Liquid to start picking up, like, like in this case, the Tusker and the Dazzle as the first two, just to block OG from having those comfort heroes. You're going to lose the Gyrocopter, though. It's... Is, is, it a, is it a worthwhile trade? Like, to stop Fly from having the Dazzle? I don't know. Cause... In a sense, I think you could if you do get Huskar on your own Radiant side or something else, back. because we have seen Gyros sometimes fall off against because you have so much magical damage, and then he does get countered out pretty easily and once he gets the Huskar, but at the same time, you know, it's like, well, we keep seeing this Dazzle and it's doing work for OG. How do you not block pick it? How do you not ban it out? But, you know, there's so many heroes, eventually you're going to have to keep playing against this one playstyle, and hopefully they can figure it out, but... And maybe this time, since they're on the Radiant side, they won't be able to take advantage of the, the Roche and then immediately, you know, just basically win the game after that, so... Ten seconds remaining. Two great heroes against the Meepo as well. Remaining. Always keep that in the back of my mind when you have that on the field. Like Wyvern with his curse. Reserved. I think the problem with playing against OG is that they establish tempo like much faster than a lot of teams. Like they're just essentially running you. It's pretty rare to see Miracle ever just flat out lose his lane. And so once he does okay in the laning phase, he picks up his first major tier 3 item. Like the mech or the SNY and then he just gets active on the map incredibly quickly. It's hard to counteract that playstyle. Like, oftentimes what ends up happening is they just take all the objectives, and then they kind of just choke you out. It sort of feels like the secret when they had, like, Artesian stuff, where they would just get map control off the bat, and then out-farm you. So I think that the correct play is for Liquid to try to counteract that with heroes that can battle early on. So they take the Gyrocopter and the Razor and the Tusk. Like, these are three incredibly strong heroes that fighting early on. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, the games that I saw them lose at the majors, the ones, the series against Vega, were, which were the only series that they lost, it was when no one was able to actually solo kill Miracle in the lane a few times. I think, uh, I can't remember who I casted that with, but whenever that would happen, it just felt like they were able to roll on to a win there. Sorry, it wasn't very rememberable, so. <laughs> if it was like OD Pixel or Toby, I would have remembered, but. I mean, we can't re we can't forget either that last game No Tail did play the Shadow Fiend, so it could still be you know something like a miracle anti mage. I, not in this game, but I'm just saying, like I know I think personally I think Miracle is is better than a No Tail on the Shadow Fiend, but like you said, he does have these wonky picks where you know No Tail will go onto something else. We saw last game Miracle go on the Huskar. 
We still have the Meepo in the pool. Not necessarily that great against the Gyrocopter, but still things to watch out for. Support. Somewhat a defensive support in that it has. At the same time, he's so aggressive too with that Aether Shock. Yeah. It's really surprising damage early on. I think you have to be aggressive with this hero. Like, you have like 285 move speed, and you die in like four shots to everything. You're like 872 HP, and like level 9 or something like that with a wand. There's like three right clicks, kills you pretty much. If, if you're defensive, you just seem to die. Yeah. So maybe a Night Stalker pick up here from Team Liquid, I would like to see. I mean, you can get aggressive in the mid lane, you can get aggressive, start diving the Dazzle, the Shadow Shaman, these heroes are really weak, but... Uh, okay. A Phoenix? This That's... is a... It's good against Shadow Fiend, though. Like, the Shadow Fiend pops BKB, then you're forced into a situation where you either attack the Egg, and then pop the ultimate, or he can just play the positional game. Like, I really like Phoenix against SF. Like, it kites it pretty well. The you issue see. I'm kind of seeing a little bit is, like, uh, does Team Liquid have the ability Team to stop Liquid's OG from just forcing down the towers again? Now you get a healing ward up for the Juggernaut. Uh, with Shadow Shaman wards, Dazzle with his burst, heal SF with his wave clear. Like, can OG just force the issue like they did in Game 1? Obviously not to the extent because the Huskar isn't really just that, that big guy in the front lines anymore, but is Liquid going to run into the same problem? Now you can just spin and hit the egg, right? And this, this is, like, a huge out. Out, uh, out. We're not out pick, but a huge counter coming in for the Phoenix. Unless you can get like Phoenix with a good Midas and then get him fast level 11, fast level 16. Else, yeah, it's going to be tough sledding. Biggest thing is Phoenix really needs a lot of levels, and is he going to get it in the situation where you have, you know, the Shadow Shaman Hex, and then as well as he can just hold you there, and then Juggernaut spin. So we'll have to see and if it's going to be enough, and is it going to be a support Phoenix, or is it dual lanes, off lanes? We'll have to see. Does support Phoenix really work against this OG lineup? It's okay, you just need level 6. That's what the hero is predicated upon. You're... Your hero is probably like the least item dependent offlaner in Dota. Like everything that you get on top of the hero just makes it slightly better. But there's no item that you need. Like for certain offlaners, you need like a blink or a force staff to be able to be useful. But Phoenix isn't really. You just essentially need levels on the hero. But if you got a blink on Phoenix, you can innovate it. Blitz. You Let's blink in, you dive. That sounds <laughs> awful. Team Liquids, turn to pick. What's really left to couple with it, though, apart from... Bane, Lich. Shadow Demon? That can't work. Bane, Shadow Demon, yeah, that works. Lich isn't too bad. Honestly, Lich isn't too bad because of the... Wait, please, no. <laughs> ET God? Please, no. He, he just... Cl he... Five seconds remaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by himself, he's ass. Reserve time. Yeah. Get that Rubik, steal those wards. Let's do it. <laughs> Rubik's still, out, man. You can actually steal Omni out. Slash and Blade Fury. It's not too bad, too. Any of the Juggernaut spells is really handy as a Rubik. Oh, that's bad. Well, <laughs> it's... Sorry, man. <laughs> Break your dreams. And I was just thinking so much about what can that hero be? Ten seconds. Mm. I think they need more control, but... That's why I suggested the Shadow Demon of the Bane. Both heroes do okay against the Jug. You can dodge Omni Slash hits by just sleeping, but it All is right. going to be... You would never guess this in a million years. Elder Titan Dota. So how's it... I'll be very impressed. So, so what's, what's the dream here from Kuro? Like, what's the ET meant to do? Eat away armor, a lot of teamfight potential, the aura is insane.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Then you've got Weave. Yeah, Weave kind of counters it out, but at the same time, if you think about it, if Phoenix dives in and they're forced to attack the egg, then maybe you can get off a good Echo Stomp, but at the same time, you're going to be burning at the same time, so it won't really stun. So I'm trying to figure out where that synergy is coming from. Maybe you get a Tuscan, he can shard somebody and then and then do it, but what is the Elder Titan really meant to do? This other shaker, like he he wins in a man mode. Like it's suitcase versus totem right now. He's so godlike on that hero, by the way, Moon. Uh, I think we watched. I think all of us watched his performance at yeah. uh, the majors. This one so ham. Single handedly beating EG. I believe in No Tail this game. I think that OG have a really stable draft. I think that No Tail's been playing exceptionally at this tournament so far. I'm feeling it. OG's got this. It, it really. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? Everybody knows what Elder Titan does. It's like yeah. you, you're you kind of slow moving. Your stun kind of sucks now. <laughs> I, I want to see like we win. Just. Okuro okay. has a plan. Hey, he, he he was the man that used to do his support. He Is was he the like man... the reverse Huskar, where you pick him and you instantly lose last pick? <laughs> yeah. Prepare for battle. Beautiful. Let's get it underway and hopefully not the uh, greatest stomp history uh, series of all. Uh, as Team Liquid, they're drafting unique. They're drafting different. They're drafting unusual, and they're drafting in. They're drafting in a way where they. Can lose in ten minutes. Yeah, or, they really or, can. Or or it just completely works out. No, no, Mind actually, blowns we were, everyone. We were really good in game number one for avoiding the whole this could actually be a complete outdraft uh kind of phase, but it seems like we've just like we've said screw it, we're now just calling it out right now that Team Liquid, if this works, we'll be going back over the over the replays going, Okay, this is how it all functioned. The funny the fun thing is that Kuro was this is back when he was still playing with Na'Vi. Really enjoyed playing the Elder Titan as a support hero. And he's actually on this Elder Titan in this game too. So, the idea is is good. If the cores can get bigger and then they just buy some space for Koro to do his work, that's fine. But you think about the difference in the supports. Like, how quickly to each, each support come online. Shadow Shaman as well as Fly. Fly is great from level 1. Crit, he's not great from level 1, but if he hits level 3, you've got a high amount of damage or a high amount of control coming out from him, and when he hits level 6, it's even better. Like, Elder Titan is level 6, he puts another point up into his aura. <laughs> like, if he, I, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of wondering if he does, like, 3 into Echo Stomp, 1 into Astro, 1 into Natural Order, because if you can do that, then you can get the combo off with your Earth Splinter. And maxing out the Echo Stomp, I feel like that's kind of the support play now, at least for me, but... On we'll Chirax, guys... they're gonna have a crack at middle lane, the eye shards are available, gonna oh. lock Miracle in position. Fly does still have the ability to level up Shellac Grave, in fact, that's exactly what he does. Getting Miracle back behind the tower. There's no salve available here for Miracle. So, he'll have to munch on the Tango. Or either that, or he just raises down the wave. Gets his money back that way. But that's a really good start there from Liquid, and uh... Good patience from Kyrax. He waited an extra 30 seconds there in the middle lane just to get that combo off. I mean, it's just going to show you that, yeah, they're playing really greedy on the side of OG with their picks and lane stays. So Liquid can punish it. Nice dive out from Mind Control here. And that's my biggest thing. Is is Mind Control going to be able to get levels? And because they're putting Dazzle mid, he's kind of free to do whatever he wants. So this is a really good pick all in all just for the laning stage. And it's, it's, I think it's going to work out for them. Yeah. So far, Mind Control's been having a great time. Like, Crit's got these shackles, but he's never going to get in range. That's why that Rubik Bam is... Like, it was there. Uh, actually, it went the other way. I think it was actually OG who ended up banning out the Rubik in this game. But normally, Rubik is the best controller up against Phoenix, because it's that instant instant grab and then just throwback, cancelling the Phoenix's Icarus dive. But Crit, he really just wants to find him and make the most out of the shackles, hold him in position, and then combo with the ether shock but he doesn't have level two yet so all he is is physical damage against the phoenix but at least he's able to pump a lot of this down stopping mind control from you going this? for the fire spirits uh earth shaker and the tusk both blocked each other out from the rune 
<laughs> one with the fissure, one with the shards. That was that was pretty cute. I kept my eyes on bottom line at that point. Uh, my control really wants something other than a regeneration rune. But he'll take the bounty. I mean, he wanted the regen, not not the bounty. But I would say so far it's going to be working out in Liquid's favor just because they're shutting down miracles and he has to be very careful. They are, however, getting some good stacks off, but at the same time, he, he just can't go up. This is nice laning control coming in from Fada. Yeah, the sec the second uh, that Miracle leaves, it's just going to leave a very, a very exposed fly. But fly is fine with that. He did it in the last game too, as the dazzle just sits back behind the tower. The creep wave pushes in, and then he just shadow waves for CS or whatever. So it's, it's a very it's a very simple approach for him. But the the primary issue right now for Team Liquid. I mean, I mean, for OG, is that the only way they've really got to catch up the heroes is the SF flash farming inside the jungle, where Team Liquid are on top of the CS board for both the Razor as well as the Jaros. They go again now on a Miracle. It's probably going to be more of the same, however, even if the Sun does catch out too. Miracle, the Shallow Grave will come in, and that keeps him alive. And he's got a ball to heal himself back up pretty quickly, so he doesn't have to leave the lane like he did last time. But it's another movement here from Jirax, which just keeps Miracle at bay. Actually, he doesn't have any region now. He's bottle crowing, and he's, he's, I mean, he has no mana to raise too. This is just a nightmare for a Shadow Fiend. He's gonna get blocked oh, off no. too. Again, the shards will fly. This could be it for Team Liquid, but there was no static link. It's it was still TV, on cooldown yeah. for for Fader, and that's where the opportunity goes awry. No way to steal the damage and inflict enough damage before the SF reaches his own tower. And Miracle's having a hard enough time as it is. Like it's not only the fact like he's just burning all of his normal his, his normal regeneration, having to use the bottle the entire time. He doesn't even have the boots, so he can't outrun or get some good distance on the snowball. I'm just looking at Moon and just wondering, like, what is he supposed to do compared to the Phoenix? Phoenix is already level 4, Moon is... Oh, if he gets stomped! Oh, this is going to be first blood up here. Oh, oh with a fissure, yeah. not 100% certain, back behind the creep wave. And, uh, well, okay, yeah, that was still flat cannon, and that is going to be the first blood. That was the first to nine as well, which came to the Tusker as he did that over in the neutral camp. But good first block for Team Liquid. It's on the offlaner, it's on the Earthshaker, so it's not as terrific, especially as Moon already completed up his Soul Ring. But it looks like they're trying to force this into multiple kills. As the Phoenix has got the end of the double damage rune, Miracles had a decent amount of damage stolen from him, but there's just not enough of a creep wave or cover for Mind Control to go for that jump. Yeah, and the biggest thing right now is that Miracle doesn't have boots, but he is getting them flown out to him, so... Well, he's not doing too bad, considering how far Fada has been pressuring him, as well as the, the Tusk here from Jerax, but still, this is all... Okay, he's kind of out of position here, but Fly is here. Both teams have this really good board mid lane showing out what the enemy team is doing. I want to keep my eyes on bottom lane now, because I'm fairly certain this is where our next kill is going to be. No tell is about to crack level 6, and with the Omni Slash, Mind Control cannot come close to No Tell if there's, like, not a creep wave with him. Because No Tell will kill him straight away. The, uh, obviously the Omni Slash chases with the Phoenix because he doesn't disappear from the map. And there it is. There's that level 6 from Notel. And with the Observer Ward also in the lane, it's going to time out in 5 seconds. But he can see just how close Mind Control will get. So he understands what he's up against. And they've also just blocked out OG's camp for Miracle. It is, I should however... Have Look at Chris' position. If he can get the oh. Shackle off right now, he controls the Phoenix. Is it and Notel, yeah. can he get in range in time? And yep. Instantly into the Omni Slash, ensure the kill. They're going to battle for the top rune as well as the Fissure will keep out both Matumba as well as Koro. And Miracle, he does manage to bottle up that room. The stop will slow down. down Miracle and the cooldown committal. Fly's just waiting here. He knows he can turn the heal and with the double raise in the Shallow Grave, Miracle could try and take this fight. Matumbaman, the salve, saving his life quickly and allowing Jirax to rotate in with the Tusker. Not only killing up the SF, but body blocking up Fly. He can't keep him controlled for long enough, but it could turn there. And Jirax, the perfect time, the perfect place, the perfect position. You know, and they maybe get another one. The haste too coming that in. That stomp, yeah. it connects. Fada could just dive underneath the tower, and they'll take both the hero kills. Ay ay ay. Well, and uh, they need to be careful too, TPing back into this middle lane. They still have Jirax here, and I mean, with Fly gonna be up now, I guess he should be okay. He has the TP support coming in. But uh, Jerax, is he going to be stealing this EXP? No, Crit gets onto him. Yeah, Crit finds him. But Jerax just goes for the run. But uh, Frozen Sigil is going to cause a lot of problems for Crit and Crit. 
Well, he wonders where Jirax is. Jirax will come out of the tree line as Mind Control diving in deep as that Phoenix crit still ticking down quite heavily, and he doesn't really have enough life to survive this one. Doesn't even turn for a shock. The Crete Wave will end up following the Liquid players back out. In fact, Notel rotates over. He goes directly for the spin, so Mind Control cannot control Notel, and this will allow Notel to get himself a solo kill. A lot of heroes rotating for Liquid. They do not want this stack to go uncontested. So Fader moving forward. Fly, well, he moves into the middle of them. The Snowball's already heading to Miracle and flies too far away. No Can he get in range with the Shallow Grave? There she goes. As the Gyrocopter, well, no tail does already die. Miracle gets himself out to safety. More TP supports coming oh, he in. Back on on they can turn for the Fissure. It doesn't lock Jirax in, but it does hold Fader here for the moment. So they can go for the Razors as Miracle and Moon, and they move down deeper, chasing after Fader. Can they get close enough? The TP's going out. Moon needs to stun oh. through the tree line. He gets it. Fader won't TP out in time. Crit gets in range as well for a couple of earn charges. And uh, that's going to be three to five. And how much of that stack did SF even take? I think he got the majority of it. I think so too. He's up to Aquila now. But I think they stole maybe three of the bigger creeps. But in the end, they definitely got a little bit uh, antsy there from Liquid, just diving and diving. But at the same time, they did get the solo kill onto No-Tail. Nice chasing down there, coming in from Matumba Man. And just really well played. So all in all, I think it's about even. Liquid coming out a little bit ahead just because they were able to bring down No-Tail. My control preparing again. He's soaking up the experience in the tree, but he got perfectly pinged out by No-Tail. He doesn't have the movement speed available, but now Mind Control realizes he jumps up and he's just in range for the shackles. And, uh, well, there's no reason to commit your Omni Slash. Not while the Creep Wave's there, but there's that big damage that can arrive from the Ether Shock. Jirax did not get there in time for the Snowball save, which was the idea. So another kill coming in the way of OG with only Spin, Shock, and Shackles being committed. Really not that heavy for abilities. Yeah, speaking of that, you see that Hex is only 1.2 or 1.2. 0.25 seconds. It's not really that valuable as long as you can get off your shackles, but the scaling and the damage for the shackle, if you can get it off, is amazing. Sure, sometimes you won't have enough time to hex and then get in range for the shackle. So I kind of agree with him. Just, you know, nice play from him, knowing that he's going to dive that way. If maybe Mind Control had do dove farther down and then just TP'd away, he could have lived, but he tried to get back to his tower. That miracle, you try and control him. You try and stop his farm, but he's already 200 net worth in front of the Razor now. Like, you just couldn't stop him. The Gyrocopter is also just behind that of the, of the Juggernaut. So very equal on the two cores. Even the offlands in the way, well, Phoenix is the, is the second lowest net worth, but there's not that much money separating, the, separating them all. So 10 minutes in, it's not as though any team really has a massive advantage. Progression of items are pretty standard across the board. Call down on top, Moon. Suddenly gonna get hit by one of the rockets. The stomp trying to combo. He'll turn for the fissure. Actually stunning up Kuro, so Kuro unable to hit that stun from the stomp, allowing the Jarikop to get into a kill position. Yeah, it's kinda like what Blitz said earlier. Phoenix just really needs to get that level six and then get into that level eleven. So his items aren't gonna be as, you know as needed as the rest of his team here but with that online maybe they can start putting up a, a better team fight situation because OG it seems like they are clawing their way back into this game it's funny where, where like where they're clawing their way back is by farming up in not only the lanes but also the jungle but no tail is being watched like a hawk there's three observer wards committed from team liquid all through the bottom lane and into the radiant jungle this one was a little bit earlier, so it's about to time out watching over the camp area. Uh, just because the timing of that one, it makes sense. But now you throw one a little bit deeper, like halfway into, into the depth of the OG jungle, and another one sitting on the bottom lane. They always want to know how many heroes OG are committing to this bottom lane. A little bit of protection for mind control, but also possibilities for Jirax to understand where he can gank. And when mind control is worth it for him to rotate over. I literally saw two Liquid Heroes TP bottom lane to try and kill... Oh, call down, Miracle. Yeah, he doesn't see it coming straight away, but he does have that buckler, so it's good armor available oh, for him. He right winds up the Requiem, but Dolman ran in there. Jirax able to get the shards off, but support will arrive. No tail going for the spin, burning through Jirax. Mind Control goes for the ulti. It's underneath the tower for the spin. They get through the egg in time. Miracle back into the safety of the tree line, but he's going to bottle up and chase up after here, Fader. He's going to run himself out through the bottom river area. He will get out to safety. The sigil made chasing almost impossible for him. As OG want to really go for a little bit more. It's that mid tower with Moon rotating over. Three very quick kills. 
And the mass serpent wards are up as well. And Phoenix Hex dying in, in, during that team fight just cost him. Oh, they're gonna get Kuroki too here. Probably they have the. They could have. No, it just keeps him out of the fight for now. Yeah. Kuro's gonna trigger the soul ring, so now he can go for the spirit stomp. Chasing after Moon, the Echo Slam, trying to buy some space, but Razor not caught out by that one. Stealing a little bit of the damage, so they can farm up the mass serpent wards a little bit. But it was also the fact that Tier 1 Tower is already down. So OG, they lose the Shaker, not a great thing, but they get what they came for. Three great kills on a tower. I'm wondering if they're gonna get another tower though for Team Liquid here. Are they gonna press the issue? It's gonna or... be difficult. That mech just got completed on Miracle. So OG are in a pretty good position to fight back. Like you got no Omni Slash, but you still got a drum charge for the Juggernaut. You've still got Dazzle's big heal. That's still a level four Ether Shock. If you combine up both the Shadow Wave as well as the Ether Shock, the Creep Waves just don't exist for Liquid and the OG ones just get buffed. And we're not even counting in Razors, Fissures. Like, there's a lot of different things that just screw around with Liquid's ability to, to, to push. I'm going to go back to one of the points I was trying to say before the team fight happened. It's, it's no tail. This Juggernaut pick is working out absolutely beautifully. It's just because they picked that Elder Titan last and they have no reliable lockdown on him. Like, oh. they, they cannot kill this Juggernaut all, all, all it seems attack. like. It's going to be like, what, the Tusker? But <laughs> you kind of need to initiate before he spins, like blink directly into Walrus Punch and then... He's just too fast. Yep. And now he's even faster. You're never going to catch this Juggernaut now. So we actually get the build. It's the BTs, Aquila, the Drums, is under coming in for the Juggernaut. Middle tower is under and we'll attack. see just how much he moves, but this is the different thing with OG. This is one of the first things that impressed me when we first saw that lineup uh, come to play. Uh, no tell. Uh, trouble. Oh. The Stomp controls him, and the Shallow Graven heal from Dazzle. Now to do some work, especially with the spin. Omni Slice is off cooldown, now he's gonna go to work, bouncing down to Matumblemon, giving almost a double kill to him. He's still alive for the count till Kuro will slap him down with a briefcase. They'll try and go deeper, but that Nova is up, Fly, they're all oh. trying to attack, but the Spirit, it's not only the Spirit coming in from the ET, it was the fact that we're hit by the Fire Spirit, the fish will connect from Moon. The Mouse Open was down trying to help him out, and Kuro's now trying to run away, but Miracle has more than enough damage. Liquid will lose the whole enchilada. 12 to 10 in favor of OG. That fight was probably still a lot closer than OG would have really liked. Yeah, what a play from Mind Control, just getting off those Fire Spirits and all the heroes before he gets off his egg. If he didn't do that, he would have gotten two kills, so really good play coming in, at least getting something off the board. No tell, go unfortunately going down two by that last right click from Elder Titan. That could have been easily a 5-0 sweep coming in from OG, but Liquid definitely coming, uh, not ahead, but at least, you know, getting something out of that team fight. Matumba needs a little bit of help here, but he's calling it in. The TP's already on the way, and the fact that No Tell just used his spin to farm, he'll move over into the middle of the cooldown, runs back and then realizes Phoenix has arrived as well. The Fire Spirit should easily be able to hit with the Snowball as well. No tell is down for the count. The healing ward couldn't do enough in return. And Team Liquid, not only do they bring like their entire team down here to kill off the Juggernaut, now they can take the tower. Yeah. They even use the Sigil as bait to drag the Creep Wave away. It's like uh, one of the no-nos you learn when you play Earthshaker, you do not farm using Fissure. And that's like a no-no too when you're when you're kind of like in that situation. Sure, you can Blade Fury, but you kind of have to TP out when you Blade Fury in this situation. You don't know where the enemy team is. He used it as the only way they get that kill. Team Liquid really do not have a great lineup for pushing buildings. Like Crit's coming in, the Sentry Wards are still on cooldown for now. But this Observer Ward sees Jirax moving, and now the Range Creep also reveals his position. I guess the Tier 1 Tower taken. The mech was already burnt from OG, because they're trying to add pressure to the tier 2 tower in mid. So it looks like uh, it will just be the easy tower for Liquid on the bottom lane. Really mm -hmm. expecting some kind of like reaction there from, from OG the second they saw that Tusker, but decided not to go for it. They still need the, the money. Like Moon still needs that Blink Dagger. There's no proper jump in initiation. There's no Blink for the Shaman. He went for more utility build. At the same time, though, you can say the same thing for Liquid, though. They don't have anything as well. And that's where the Shadow Fiend just flash farms way more efficiently than all these other heroes. He pushes out the lanes constantly. Whereas for the side of Liquid, they don't really have that. Besides maybe the Gyrocopter, still not as effective. And that's why you're seeing this top lane being pressured already. And they cannot even defend it. All right, well, what are you meant to do? Like, you want to walk up, but you got to assume that OG has aggressive observer wards inside your jungle. So they'll see you coming from a mile away. And then you want to fight into Mass Serpent wards and an SF with Max Souls and a level 2 Requiem. Even killing him off is difficult because he went for the Sanj first. 
And the SMY is almost done. So crit, like he's forcing a lane by himself. Miracle will come in for the extra CS. And what, we're 17 minutes in again. This started at game number one where they had a crack at this. Notel makes a nice choice, runs up and away. So he doesn't get hit by that storm from Kuro. And I, I really got to give props to Kuro. Like, I did say like he was a great ET support, but he's hitting a lot of these stomps. Yeah, these, normally it's harder to hit it when you don't have these setups, but at the same time, that's just really good play coming in from, from OG2. Pressuring this, making sure that there's TPs back, so you, you're not losing out on the space, then you just go TP to your lanes, and you should most likely be safe. But Liquid did the good thing there. They didn't TP back all of their heroes. They're still in the enemy jungle. Maybe they can get a pick off, but... Uh, on crit here and it looks like crit's gonna be rushing a blink dagger too so that's uh one of the well here they come here he comes crit took a step out a little bit too far no tp supports coming in with a call down he'll get one last shock off so GRX has dropped down low but og were also aware of this they haven't observed what just north of the roche pit and because Please of that they understand down. what uh resources liquid are committing into their own jungle but in return like liquid rotate for a kill yet they pick off the shaman okay this isn't great when they're stomped Oh, no tell spins just in case he was still in range. This has to be the fastest juggernaut in history. <laughs> you got Mask of Madness now, oh my goodness. This is uh, some innovation to say the least. I'm very curious to see what he goes for next. This is almost one like the classic Batrider build. Uh, All the movement speed in the world to drag people back with Lasso. In this case, it's just a juggernaut that's able to chase or run away. Ah, uh, the good old days of Mask of Madness on your sniper. This, uh, good old hey man, Sniper was the old combo with the ET. Yeah. Throw down the spirit, go for the assassination shot. I that was that was that was really high damage. Please no flashbacks to six point eight three. That was a wonderful time. That was that was eighty minute games of As brutal, I said, a wonderful time. <laughs> brutal high ground sieges and defenses, to say the least. You just gotta learn to like the farm. It's like uh, watching Dusa. You have to basically watch her farm five item slots for her to be useful. <laughs> like what? Mystic Snake is useful. What her fit? Actually, her ulti is really good when T fighting though. So, if you can hold them there, of course. Oh yeah. <laughs> she works nicely you with the Wyvern. Yeah, exactly. The problem is like. You, you see teams just like this, like with 12 kills for either side, for both sides, 18 minutes in. Like, you need to fight early on, oh, that's yeah. one thing the Medusa is completely incapable of doing. Alright, so the SMY is now done for Miracle. This SF's getting bigger and bigger. Fly doesn't have anywhere near as much as he had in the last game. But that's also because they didn't give him the farm time. They're making sure that both Miracle and Notel are as big as they can possibly be. Ring and they really are. They're, tower, they're both above all the net worth of Liquid. Like 10k on the SF, 8.1k on the Juggernaut. Like they're, they're miles ahead. And now, oh, oh, oh. no tell on the TP! The Snowball will catch him. He decided not to spin in TP. And because of that, well... Top lane though. Are they actually catching up to... Uh, Moon needs another Fissure or a stun or something. Crit just wants a shock. Moon has that Blink take a back off cooldown. So Blink into Fissure, and then allow Crit to get in range for the Aether Shock. He's still... Oh. You can see him start. You can see him start, but the rotation's coming over from Team Liquid. Miracle will be called out by Matumperman, but it's the Tasca who snowballs himself in, catches out the Shaman, and then isolates Moon inside the shards. Kuro is able to stomp and TP away from Miracle. Miracle thinks he might still be here, but it's because Kuro walked up to the Fog of War on the hillside where Miracle had no vision and then just TP'd out. So three heroes lost for OG as Team Liquid hit back nice and hard here in game two. Man, that was one of the most unfortunate TPs I've seen in a long time. Poor no tell. Oh, in mid lane, Miracle. Miracle. This is ballsy. He's still got that mech available, so, so he's got a lot more life as uh, he baits the ulti multiple times. The rocket's oh, gonna mech? connect. He's never mech. He's got 17 one charges. He triggers both and survives. Now he lets the ulti flow, and he will end up surviving. The gyrocopter goes down at this one. Miracle, can they bring down the egg? No, they cannot. Well, not yet at least. They're still trying to feed through it. Fly one more attack. The spirits from mind control again, stopping all the fun of OG. Team Liquid have still lost three heroes as it was No Tail who was able to clean up with the Omni Slash and the back lines while Mind Control was jumping in. He still wants to run. That spirit doing some work because it's keeping that Blink Dagger of Moon on cooldown. But it's only a matter of time now. One second being that time where Moon blinks the complete wrong way. Uh, <laughs> and Mind Control will head over to his tier 2 tower. It's like he didn't go that way. He's back into the safety of his buildings. You jinxed him, Toby. You hyped it up and then all of a sudden it's... <laughs> wait for it. Wait for... Oh, wait for nothing. Yeah. Still have the wards now. This is prime time. 
Oh, oh, this, this is actually quite huge, but Liquid, they've still got T1 and T2 towers down here. Mind Control's gonna start with the Sunray, so Nodel's not gonna enjoy this, but with a defensive weave from Fly, the armor is also increasing heavily, so Gyro's damage really isn't that impressive. Oh, but Nodel wants to get out of here, even with the cooldown. The Fizz will stop Gyro from getting a straight up combo, but Nodel's locked inside the pit. He's gonna go down at this point. Fly will safely TP out, but they've lost the Shaman, they've lost the Juggernaut, and now they've actually lost Roshan as well here. Team Liquid are taking it all from OG. Fighting without your SF there and not having the healing ward up, that's a very big blunder. As well as you said, the tier 1 tower is still up on the bottom lane. Easy access for Team Liquid to there. They should have just backed off. I mean, Team Liquid can't even do Rosh themselves. They could just wait patiently, and instead you're just giving the game back over to Liquid. And if they... You know, catch out Miracle here, it could be even worse, but... They're coming to check. But they don't have any vision on the hillside, so they don't see it. The only observer what they've got is further up in the lane, which is about to time out in 25 seconds anyway. Uh. Yeah. This is... It's a very uncharacteristic mistake from OG to do something like that. Like, maybe they also thought Liquid are on the sidelines for a little bit longer. Weren't expecting them to be alive so soon, like... Because they came in, Liquid came with everyone. Because if, if Liquid was still different after 20 seconds, OG would have been fine. But they weren't. So now, Liquid. Trying to force the issue, but they're not really going to get much from the cooldown apart from mopping up the creep wave. And they're going to back up. A little bit of damage to the tier 2 tower, but everything's up for OG now apart from wards. Yeah, and this is just giving you more space. Phoenix is now up to level 12. And you cannot underestimate Sunray too. Once this gets leveled up, you can just Sunray in while your Icarus diving and it'll at least put out some of that pure damage. It's just insane, especially when it's maxed out, how much you can take in an instance. So it, it's kind of like, you know, having a Wyvern, but, you know, it even works at times where it, it, even if you're low, you're still going to be taking that, that base. So. Vancouver is getting everything that Liquid need to... I don't know if they want to push high ground just yet, but with the Vladimir's offering, Liquid's team fight's getting really scary. To a point where OG, like, they may want to just try and back out and stop trying to force the lanes, but the mass open wards are going down, and now Liquid will try and give an answer. The visual will keep Jirax off for the moment, as the wards just keep beating into the tier 2 tower. So Liquid will take care of these before they try and chase. And OG understand this, but they forced Liquid back. They stopped the push to their own tier 3 at least. That's really good too. That's making them come back, and then now you're able to free farm the map a little bit, giving space for Miracle, just dodging and ducking after that really bad Roche fight, and he really needs the space to get his BKB. Once they have that online, maybe they can uh, maybe they can start taking team fights. And looking at Crit now, I was talking about his Blink Dagger, you know, 10 minutes ago. He got picked off, and then now he's changed his mind. He's going for the 4 step. This is not, not where you want to be when you're Crit, because he had so many opportunities. You know, top lane, they almost got that kill, and the bottom lane, he just got picked off. It just, all these little bitty setbacks are just you know, piling up, piling up. I think he also understands the problem of, like, what happens when you get sharded or your teammates get sharded. He needs, to, needs ways to keep his other teammates alive, and the four stuff's the way to do it. Their jump and initiation from crit is not going to help him in the next 10 minutes. Maybe later on it'll be worth it, but they don't they don't control, the, like, the vision of the map at the moment, and that's where the blink dagger could really come into play. Instead, you got the four stuff, get heroes out of the ET abilities, as well as get them away from the Tusker. Yeah. Or even at a call down. Like, it's just such a better item. Yeah, four staff, grave up, a lot of de defensive me mechanics here, and... Well, they're going to be pushing up on the high ground here. I wonder if they're going to go high ground with it. How long do they have left in the Aegis? About, you know, two minutes here, it looks like, so... Yeah, they you, really you want got to. another minute and a half, roughly. Well, they could try it, but this is the reason why OG's already pushing the top. I think, except the fact they're going to lose their tier 2 tower. So they push Notel up on the top with the BTs, he can easily come back. Moon's in a similar position, except just with the TP scroll. But they really wanted to get levels and farm onto this Juggernaut. He's still the man that can carry this for them. The ASF is still 2,000 net worth in front of the Razor. Once his BKB is up, which should be in 100 gold, aka this camp. Oh, actually, no, there's only one Wild Wing in there. That's not so great. But still... Miracle is still a huge fighter when it comes to these engagements, and Team Liquid, their control's been pretty good, but these Fire Spirits from Mind Control, which have stopped the Egg from going down, they're not going to mean anything soon. Because the BKB will be on SF, he could do it by himself if he needs to with his attack speed, and Notel is still going to have spin available, and he's got 3,000 gold, which... I'm interested to see if he goes... Actually, for what? 
But uh, do, do you... Scotty is pretty good. What did he just pick up? No, he's going for the butterfly apparently. So, well, this is, well, you can still get a monkey king bar over on the gyrocopter. I mean, his biggest problem is he still doesn't have that many. Uh, there we go. Oh, oh he's got the walrus punch though. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry, that spin's not going to work. No tell. Goes very much askew, but there's no creep wave here. So if he wants to go for the Omni Slash and try and find a kill, the group up is for Chirac. Oh. He does actually go down. Like it was a, a bit of an RNG if he would bounce back over to the Tuscar. So it ends up being a one for one trade off. He didn't even pop Mask of Madness in there. That would have probably been an extra three attacks, too. So mm. it was, uh, could have actually faulted him if he didn't get that. But going back on the subject of the Shadow Fiend, I mean, Razor has a BKB now and he has a Haste Rune. This is just going to make. Shadow Fiend's life a living hell. All he has to do is just static link him, and then you know you take out the Shadow Fiend. So I'm trying to figure out how they're gonna really keep him in the game because of Fada's you know item progression. He's been really good on on the Razor today, earlier, and then now. So for me, like looking at OG's position right now, you would look towards like if Razor's gonna is if Razor's gonna get that static link off. You basically need to get your hero out. This is four star from the Shaman, and it's a fissure block so the Razor can't keep chasing you. The other way around it is getting that Echo Slam off before you actually have... Uh, uh, before you actually have the BKBs BKB triggered. Yeah. Yep. So you just blink him, instantly get the Echo Slam off, follow up fissure, follow up stun. That'll mop up the Creep Wave, allowing Nota to go ham with his only Slash, already up to level 3, so he's at the maximum jumps for that. And you start with a high amount of armor. So Moon can actually keep fighting over time. So can Notel, so can the SF. And this makes us to the Gyrocopter who went for a little bit more of a defensive build, aka BKB, SMY, Helm of the Dom. Like, until he gets that Monkey King bar up, even if he does, the defensive weave is gonna make his damage output rather low. So if the Razor doesn't steal it and the and the gyro can't output it, how do you do your damage? You almost then rely on the fire spirits of Phoenix and the, and the Nova to buy a space, and the spirit of the Elder Titan to do a lot of work. I think they still have a lot of sustain though in their in their lineup though. Oh, I, I agree. Mean, so and the thing is, the biggest changer for me right now is the Phoenix as well as the Tusk. Tusk has a blink, so that's gonna be huge. Oh, look at that! BKB, does he have a crit as he comes back? Oh, he actually got the crit, but it still wasn't enough damage to kill my Tumperman. But that's your 10-second BKB now down. Funny even... thing is, the BKB didn't actually stop anything that happened there. It was just for maybe the Earthshaker was nearby. It's it's still a really good play, just because you don't know where the enemy is. It's the safety. It really is the safety. But at the same time, that's 10 seconds worth of immunity down the drain. And he doesn't have that back for another 50 seconds as well. So OG, they just keep doing this. Like this this second, the second the fight doesn't go the way of Liquid or like... Like just a small advantage, Notel instantly moves to the top lane. Before it was Moon. Buying their space. That's how we got his level 11 and pretty much his four staff as well. Shout out to uh, No Tail Score right now, 666. What He's, a devilish uh, boy. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like. It's kind of a weird build to say the least. Just because of the Mask of Madness. And we saw the problem earlier where Loda didn't have enough really physical DPS. We could see the same problem here. In this game, he is going for a butterfly that will help him survive a bit more, but still. Well, Loda even had a Magnus in his game. Yeah. So he had a buff up from that. But I, I can understand where Notel's going with this, where. Like, I, I don't actually feel the same problem. I don't think Lo, like, Notel's going to have a lack of, of DPS. Because his primary thing is he understands that Team Liquid can't finish this game right now. Because what are they going to do to breach high ground? Unless you've got Naganim Scepter or a full AC over on a Razor, you're not really going to put your the, the, your lane in peril because of all the things we are talking about like 20 minutes ago, how you can clean up the creep waves. So OG know they can defend their high ground, and if Liquid want to force that, like they better have perfect BKB timings to make it work. Or get an initiation before they go high ground. So everything for OG then turns into like attack and evade, attack and evade. At this point, they're only attacking creeps. They don't want to attack Liquid, they just attack the side lanes. Yeah. Every time. Shock, Razors, they look towards the bottom lane because Chris still got these mass serpent wards he's itching to use. And they're coming for the tier 1 tower on bottom. Mass serpent wards drop and that tower is gone. Tower is the observer attack. ward will scout out the fact that Fada is also around Roshan. She saw him walk into Roshan. So OG are aware what's going on. And Fly goes for the aggressive weave onto Matoppelman as well as Fader. Yep, we have the bots in from the Juggernaut too. He was split pushing top lane. G-Rex is really visible. If he walked oh, any further yeah. down then, they'll get the shackles. In fact, they just jump. They don't even need any real big abilities. 
So you've just lost your Tuscar, you've lost your Sigil control on the fight. And Miracle's moving over. Roshan's not really injured here. That's another mud golem that was that was uh, dominated. Well, so they get rid of Rocket, they get rid of at least the start of the golems. These things will time out and actually a minute. They last for so long. Yep. And Crit doesn't want to commit his wars this bottom lane. If he does so, like there's no way for them to either like have a nicely positioned during the fight or even take Roshan themselves. I think the biggest thing there is that they do not know if Tusk has the buyback. If they had known the information that we did, that he doesn't, then they would have, I think, still went into the pit. Sure, you can say that, hey, we have Elder Titan, you have Astral Spirit, Echo Stomp to really stop, but at the same time, you have wards down, you're going to have your Earthshaker outside the pit, you're going to have your Shadow Shaman outside the pit, so I don't think they're going to have, would have had that big of a problem unless the Tusk fought that. Well, they could have just been waiting for this. The critical items. So Urshaker's fissure, uh, uh, sorry, four stars survived. And you got the full butterfly as well after the Juggernaut. He moves forward. Bada, he's gonna be the first one. They make a couple of illusions to actually waste a lot of that Juggernaut ultimate. And the Phoenix Egg is down, but it's in the middle of nowhere. The rest of OG jump almost into the Roche pit to try and battle it out where Fowder was protected by Jirax's snowball. The Shards are gonna perfect lock effect. It's Moose Fissure, which isolates the team. There's your Master Mords and a really great choke point on the hillside. But then again, Liquid, they're up on the Radiant side as OG desperately try and find underneath their extra damage. Moon doesn't have a, well, Miracle doesn't have a lot of things to play around with here. He's got the damage. Okay, maybe he does. Four hits and Jurax just dies. Moon's locked up on the high ground. He's got four stars to get back down and get away from the Spirit of Kuro. As you know, the Fader was very, very happy he survived through that fight. Oh, poor No-Tail. And towards the end, he just got <laughs> turned around on by the ET and the Tusk, man. Tusk Snowball. All right, that was very unfortunate from him. Else, I think it would have gone really well for OG there. And what a roof of Fader too to have an illusion ring just before that fight began. Yeah, and just pop it. That's that's what soaked up a couple of the bounces of the Juggernaut. The biggest thing too was that both of the cores of OG went in. They had their BKBs on, and Jerex could not cast Snowball. So what did he do? He cast <laughs> Snowball on Roche and saves Fada. Good play there at the end there. So, but it was really funny to watch that. It was nice for him. Another thing too, like. Maybe the reason why these mud golems are so important is you think about it with the Omni Slash. You take out the original mud golem, then there's another two that can soak up even more bounces. So whenever Liquid bring that to a fight, they're just making the effectiveness of No-Tail drop more and more. So they look in towards Roshan again. But Dazzle can just walk over and weave. Like right now he's pushing in the mid lane. They're looking for that Observer or the Radiant side. And again, it, it, it scouts oh, out the they jump in. The four stuff up from Moon. There is a follow up with the snowball. And do they have enough? The Shadow Graves over on Moon. But that called out should do some work. The Earth Spinner actually cancelling the Fissure. He'll keep Matumperman back. And this will allow Miracle to fight. But the damage is being stolen right now. But how quickly? Not really quick enough until the Requiem of Souls will bounce off. The they Phoenix need egg. to get rid of this Phoenix Egg. And they're going to be able to do so underneath the cover of the BKB. Vader hiding in the tree lines. But he couldn't stay in the trees forever. That stomp from Kuro. Just a fraction of a second too late. And again this fissure from Moon. The follow-up, he's just a little bit too far away from Jirax. He has the totem available and the snowball coming down to the creeps, allowing the time for Jirax to get that pulling taker off cooldown and get away. And again, Kuro with this spirit down on the ground, making it difficult for oh, Rishi to chase him. as they still caught him up in the tree line. Juggernaut will find the kill. And with three heroes down, they'll either force buybacks or lose Roshan. Oh man, that was not the play, Jirax. He really did cost his team there. He blocked off Fada from actually being able to chase the SF, broke the static link, and now this is looking very bad for Team Liquid. It looked like they could have been in the driver's seat, but now who is going to be picking up this Aegis? It looks like it's going to be Miracle, and uh, this is just looking really good after that team fight from OG. It looked very good for Liquid at the start, but just that block off, man, from Jerex is very unfortunate. Yeah, this is just one small decision. OG, it was for them going into Roshan a little bit early, and this time around for Liquid. It's just where you position for your fights. Yep. And this gives OG so much. If we actually just check out the graphs, it was almost 7.5k advantage going the way of Team Liquid. And even almost 10k on the experience, but this has almost been zeroed out with the last with the last couple of, well, just the fights and the Roshan take, and then all the farm which comes after it while Liquid still trying to get back into the lanes. And it ends with a big SF, 20k net worth over on Miracle. I mean, he, he he didn't even have the MKB. Now, now he's got 2k gold on it, it feels. 
Did he have the MK? Yeah, he had it during the last fight. Okay, yeah, good. I was making sure. So yeah. he got 2K from the fight. Now he has the Aegis. Now they're ready to play. Here you go, OG. And are they going to find anybody? It doesn't look like it just yet. They're calling for the wraparound at the tower. Like, if Crit eat the shocks his creep wave, then he'll push up at the right time. But if he doesn't, he reveals out his smoke. That may be why. Okay, yeah, Fly's just looking and waiting. But they might find one. Matumberman. Blink forward. Oh, uh, uh, okay. 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 Blink echo. Now they're going to commit. That was. The slowest reaction times from both <laughs> no, no, of no, the they, teams. They, they, they reacted. They went backwards. <laughs> it was like, oh crap, gyrocopter. Hang on. It's just a gyrocopter. The downside about moving blindly onto the map to find a kill with smoke. And mm -hmm. during nighttime, nonetheless. I'm really surprised Matama Man just didn't pop BKB there. And did he buy something before he died? Now he doesn't have buyback. Oh, what did no. he buy? He bought the Hyperstone. No, wait, he hang on, that's the not javelin, his. The Javelin, I think. Yeah. Alright. So now the Mass Open wants to go down. There's a 40 second opening. Miracle, he's the man with the Aegis and the Mech. So slow him down. There's that Sun Ray going to work. So Miracle needs to walk out of it. He's just trying to dodge the rays. I kind of feel them right now. Miracle basically playing like a ginger. This tier 3 tower is going to go down. And Miracle, back out. Oh, Willy. No, he's still got the Aegis and he's still got the mech. So why do it? Vader actually getting oh stunned my. up and they're hitting so hard. Oh. Two range matches with the Monkey King bar. The only slash will go from no tail, but all he does is just help the push by taking out the creep wave and the Razor. Now he'll have to buy it back. 65 seconds. Kuro trying to buy his space. First with a stop. Follow up splitter. The damage is minimal. The shards will lock him in, but Miracle, he still got the Aegis. So no fear, Miracle at the moment. With a blink dagger, maybe. The Shaman kept to jump in and find that opening. Miracle wants them to bait something out to him. And now the Shallow Grave and the Four Staff out. They haven't finished the melee racks. That rocket coming out means Miracle needs a little bit more life. One level rocket, that's only level one. Like you just need Jack. They just kill the rocket and they turn around and come back in again. The Blink Dagger is still a bit of a surprise for Crit. Oh, there Down it is. Down the caught it and Moon with the Fissure Block. Koro, yep, you, you're There's too it, big. You can't fit through small gaps. And then the Four Staff, he'll go over the top of it. The Miracle, the, he'll disappear. He'll take out the rocket. The Stomp finds more space. 18 seconds till Fader is back up. And Miracle, he wants to attack the tower. The problem is still now. Stun Ray, the spin comes from no tail. As much damage as he can, but Thomas BKB will protect Miracle again with that shallow grave. They just can't stop it. The rack is down. And can they get through the egg? No, they can't. No tail will drop. The Aegis will burn. And they want to fight. The call down to Valve of the Moon. Oh. Jumped in for the Echo Slam. The Fall of Fish, even hitting Jirax at the back line. He can't get any control. Knew we brought down by Matumperman, he got a full combo off, and Miracle now out of BKB, moves away from the snowball, blinks himself up, but he bought time for Fly to be slowed down, and the shard block as well. Fly, he knows he's done for, the Shallow Grave will buy time, he attempts a TP, the Stomp comes in from Kuro, that'll end up cancelling that one. Can they catch the SF as well? The snowball's there on the front lines, but Miracle, he's getting a long way back, but how much have they got? Actually, probably nowhere near enough to kill him. The mech is back off cooldown. Maybe with the Sunray, it starts burning in combination with that urn. The Matumberman, he wants to chase the shards will fly, but Miracle evades it. Now Matumberman, he realizes they haven't trapped them in, but they maybe can force some buybacks from OG. It's the Dire Creep Wave. It came with liquid. They've run so long down that middle lane, the Creep Wave actually came with them. It was a nice try coming in from Moon, but once the BKB was popped, Requiem wasn't really useful in the end. It was nice synergy, but they really needed just that extra oomph there. And maybe if he could have stunlocked somebody, but, you know, Tuss does Tuss things, man. You just snowball back on people. Oh, and, uh, yeah, are they going to buy back? No, it's like five seconds. How can you buy back? They'll, they'll let it go. Seconds? There's no fortification available. Like, Kuro's Stomp will buy them the cover to do this, and Kret, okay, Mass Serpent Wars, Jirax is almost dead from this one, but it's no tell, he's got Omni Slash up, bounced across Kuro, and then Jirax, he offers his life on a silver platter, Moon, he doesn't have Blink available at the moment, but Matumberman, the chance of escape is probably 0.00001 Zero. <laughs> <laughs> recurring, oh, of course. Oh, Phoenix, Maybe. you jinxed Actually, it. no, he got the cheapest cover, oh. Moon's still got four up as well as Blink. Blink BKB, for the he did BKB? No, oh, he did it, he's fine, he's Gosh. okay. Moon actually didn't have both of them together. Did wait, what? Okay, so No Tail just solo killed the Phoenix at the back end. Does he have buyback? No. Yet? no. 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 On cooldown, 80 oh. seconds without a Phoenix. And what was really lost at the end? Like, okay, it was a mid Rax for a melee Rax trade. Yeah, and they should be getting this one top two without any contention. Yeah, yeah. quick raises from Miracle, Creep Wave goes down. Dazzle's now got a solar crest, so. 
Even though there's no butterfly on that SF, Fade is still going to have issues. <laughs> I don't know what Miracle's been praying to, but he's hitting every single range bash over on Fade. Every time he attacks him, those melee racks don't stand a chance. He can, uh, <coughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, finishes the melee racks, and now they'll back out. The shards catching no tell once again, but he'll just spin out. He can go buy himself something nice. Maybe not needing to risk the buyback, but he can if he wants to, and pick up that Abyssal Blade. Oh boy, Liquid. Here it I comes. Mean, uh, yeah, I guess you could say the best saving grace for them is they do have one Rax at least. So it's one Rax versus four right now. Oh, they're gonna oh, get no Rax. He blinks! <gasps> okay, that hurt. That really hurt to watch. Are they gonna just... What? How much left? Okay, so we have two minutes left on Roche, whether we know it's gonna be up or not. They'll probably just push out bottom lane. Surprised he doesn't just TP here for no tail and just push it out. But... It's the creep wave pushing it. Uh, the creep wave will push itself. It's actually a nice creep wave too with three range creeps, but they want to keep Liquid away from the tier two tower. And in order to do that, they have to keep Miracle, uh, No Tail on the front lines. In fact, they, okay, they say screw it. Like, No Tail has managed to find himself an invis rune. If they don't have a sentry here in the mid lane, okay, a gem just got purchased by the Dazzle, and I'm still not seeing, there's a gem over on the Phoenix. So that's the only detection they've got to catch out the Juggernaut, but no one will be leaving their base. If they do, they're dead. And Mind Control has been playing so good this game. It'd be just a waste to see him go down, but at this rate, it looks like OG are closing in on a swift victory. We got here. a Jaws moment. Down up, 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 down yeah, uh, you're you're in a world of hurt now. You know what he actually did? He spinned and TP'd that time for no tail, and didn't even need to. Oh, this... safety first, man. He's learned his lesson this yeah, game. That's three layers of protection right there for no tail. It's got evasion. It's got the ability to have strength as well as his spin. And this is gonna be the tier two tower mopped up. So OG, Roshan is still not. It's the maximum spawn time. Yeah, screw that. Uh, <laughs> there's also a ring of Aquila just randomly sitting inside. But we won't even worry about that because OG, even without the Ace, uh, e even without uh, the Aegis the Immortal, look at that armor kicking up for the Shadow Fiend. You've got Weave, you've got Mech, you've got Assault Curus. How is the Gyro meant to do any kind of damage into this? Like, he, he doesn't even nibble the SF. He needs a rapier, that's what he needs. Oh, I don't think even a rapier is going to help him because the Solar Crest gets thrown on top of Miracle as well. Well, he's got the MKB. That's true, though. he does. You're right. But so, he's going Butterfly build, or at least he's yeah. got the evasion of it. That, that does kind of help out, but it doesn't really help out against the Omni Slash. You know? It helps. Yeah, yeah, I was say, it helps against the Juggernaut's basic attacks, but mm -hmm. it won't stop Omni. And the SF's already got his own Monkey King bar. And he's got so much attack speed that he's. I don't even know how many extra attacks he gets. At least, I want to say, eight because he has the butterfly as well as the Mask of Madness, he triggers it. So just thinking about that, eight or six to eight extra attacks during an Omni Slash is, I mean, it's very, very disastrous, especially when you get those crits on top with mm -hmm. the Juggernaut. It's it's really good. But that's the thing about Liquid's lineup. They need a Sheepstick or something to kind of initiate on this Juggernaut to make sure he doesn't... But you can't initiate on the Juggernaut. You the can't. Juggernaut is now going to initiate on you. He's got the Blink Dagger. Miracle's positioning is perfect. They break the smoke of Liquid, who are trying to come out to scout out Roshan. Again, Moon, his fidget controls have been perfect. The spinning Juggernaut is running down the mid, so the shards will fly, but no one's in the tree line. Looks like Miracle's going to get hit by that rocket, but even with the dink to the head... He's perfectly all right. They're going to come in and check for Roshan, but I'm sorry, boys. You got to wait another 25 seconds before he's back up. As Koro's just running the spirit out to search for it. If they can't run their bodies up under the cover of smoke, does he get close enough to see? No, he doesn't. I'm just waiting for No-Tail just to kill Jerax again with the Blink Abyssal, as we saw earlier. It's just, he's, he's kind of playing with fire here. Come on, crit. Where's that... I'm, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the movement. I'm just waiting for the movement. A uh, crit's just this this. Okay, there it is. Now they can come back. Crit has one job. Tell them when Roshan's alive. And now they will come down for it. So the SF. I'm wondering actually, like, do they give the Aegis the Immortal or the Cheese the Juggernaut at this point? Let him drop the drums. Now Moon, Moon. Oh, he went back. 
thought they'd be coming up that way. Are they still going to fight here for Liquid? And this okay, will be suicide no. to do so, but the jump in, they may have no choice. Koro almost down for the count. The snowball came in. No doubt actually jumped into the middle of that snowball by the looks of it, and they take out two very quickly. Miracle can't get that ulti off because of the stun from the Nova. Now he'll wind up and let it go. Buying Moon time to get the Echo Slam off. Mind Control is just so low. 18 life. He wants a Sunray back oh, out again. Vader oh. fighting from inside the bit. OG, they burn the Aegis to the Immortal. Jurax is still here waiting. The Miracle, he can't get Satanic. the Satanic off. Oh no, now he can. Support comes in from Fly, but only to give the Cello Grave, allowing his SF to keep being a man. While Crit puts down the Mass Serpent once he'll go down an ultra kill from a Tumberman. But well, Miracle will take it straight oh. back from more. Can he know the four stuff up? He dropped below MKB, 40 life, MKB but now hit. he can't I do got anything. it. He stuns up Koro and Show actually it. cancels the stun. Mind Control, oh. one attack, he gets it. It's an ultra kill for Is he gonna Miracle. Die? The urn, the urn, he's the urn. 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 No, okay. wait, no, okay. no, Cardi will not that find was... this kill. He has life steal. Imagine if that was a shockwave creep. Oh that my god. That would have been amazing. Like a harpy comes <laughs> in. Yo, boys, what's oh. up? <laughs> oh. So the only soul survivors of both Team Liquid as well as OG are Matumbaman. They're both guys who got the ultra miracle. kills. <laughs> they oh. went so big. They went so big. But there was buyback, so wasn't there? I, yeah, but one buyback. There was one from on the crit. one from the shaman. That's all. Oh. So, so technically it was a five for four trade. Actually six. Did they have cheese during that? I don't think there was a cheese. Uh, I think that was the second one. Did the cheese one. get used? The it had to have been used by one person, but in the chaos, I I missed it. I'm sorry. Unless it's sitting on a courier right now, and the answer is no, and the answer is no. So, so yeah, cheese was also expended as well as the Aegis. So yeah, technically you could say Liquid killed off seven people. Liquid did really good during that team fight, killing off the supports early on. And that just kind of opened up the game. And that was a really good team fight coming in from Tusk. Like, Jerax made that play, stopping the Shadow Fiend ulti. And Moon, once again, you know, he's showing off some great Echo Slams, like always. It really is. That moment holding him in. But the Phoenix, the Sunray for this uh, yeah. game, like that was... That was so good for him. But Liquid are still in a very bit of, like a very dire position. They've lost their entire mid racks, they've lost their entire top racks, and all they got in return is the melee in the mid. That's not enough to give them momentum. OG will still have that pressure in the lanes. Like top lane right now is pushing in, double catapult or not. Like you have to be, bring one hero up there from Liquid to stop the push. And look at Miracle, he's already got a Moon Shard almost maxed out. It's just the item progression in this game. You can see it clearly favoring them. Matumba Man might have gotten an Ultra Kill from that, but still, it, what did he get? He got a Satanic out of it, so he's just all about the sustainability right now. He didn't, he doesn't really have all that DPS as, you know, as his Shadow Fiend does. I mean, we've seen what happens when he hits Fada. He just bullies yeah. this Razor. And it's also the, uh, the effective DPS that you get. Like, SS walking around with, like, like, weave on top of him dragging up his armor, or technically an, uh, like a negative weave effect on Liquid, so he's even more impactful with his damage. And then he's got also the presence of the Dark Lord picking in. So Jara's having everything he's got stripped away. Like, yes, he's walking around with 22 armor of, of his own, but when you add up everything OG gives or takes, he just, like, he's paper. Yeah, they're really lucky they actually have another Titan right here just to take away all this base agility. Yeah, that's that really is. It's, it's a saving They're grace for Team Liquid. And Koro's been doing a bloody good job. Like, he survived until almost the very end there. Like, if it wasn't for Miracle Stun too, maybe he would have survived. But it's... It's rough. 34 to 33. Really, there's not much in this game, even though the net worth does go the way of OG, as well as the lane advantage. Team Liquid still have a lot to work with here. I just been looking at the Phoenix and the Elder Titans for the last 20 minutes. They have not gotten a new item. They have 4k gold now. And uh, there we go. Is this good? Yeah, this is a refresher coming out from Mind Control. If he can get that off Double in the team. Nova? You see, he keeps on getting the egg off in these team fights. And now if he has a second one as well as a second Shiva's, I mean, this could be very game changing. True. But he gets the egg off, but how many times does he actually complete the full egg stun? If you he doesn't really complete it, but he kind of saves his own life as well as you know getting the double shivas off on a team fight. Normally, when he first uses the shivas, the BKBs will be popped from OG. But when the second one comes out, they're going to be all slowed. You're going to have this sunray again, and 
I just I just don't know. I think this is going to be very good for Mind Control. He's been playing superb so far, and I think this is going to be game-changing for them. You won't be seeing me around. Well, if OG are looking to wait for Roshan, they'll be waiting almost the same amount of time they waited for the last one. It's two out of the potential three minutes the spawn time. And they're still five minutes away from now. So more than likely, you'll be looking at the push coming in on the hour mark. OG won't want to make any problem, uh, any any mistakes here, especially when they've got such still a huge lead. Like, we're still looking at an SF who's got almost 10,000 net worth on top of the biggest carry of Team Liquid, being the gyrocopter. Like, this SF is still humongous, but he almost has to consume the shard. Wait, hang on, where's he? I think he could go for a Scotty here, just I, to slow I'm down, the, or he can just go for... Or he can just consume the Shard and buy BTs, because right now he's still walking around with no boots. I mean, he doesn't really need that. You don't, you don't need that. Well, he, he does if he wants to buy it back and then just have multiple SFs during a fight, but... He's got the Sand and Yasha. He's got as much as, you know, right when you have treads. So. Yeah, 353. Three, three. He's, he's only 20 movement... Uh, actually, no, he's only even 25 movement speed behind. Uh, he's two movement speed behind that of the Dazzle who's got treads. Yeah. Okay. It, it's it's not too bad. So consume the shot and buy Daedalus. <laughs> Daedalus, or I was going to say Daedalus or Scotty. It's just depending on what he wants. If you get the Scotty, you ha you're have you making sure that the enemy team isn't moving. Mm -hmm. and you also tank up even more. And But with the, the Daedalus, you're just going to hit like a monster. Yeah. And Daedalus works so well with Satanic because in almost one hit, you'll go back to full life. No, that's, that's one hit, beauty. you full life. Yep. Imagine it on like a max weave target. Oh my goodness. That's. Oh, you really don't want to imagine that. Hey, that's that's the stuff that Nightmare of Liquid Fans is made of. It's. Like it's it's almost as good as watching watching like like why do you even need to play Terrorblade to get Sunder when you have a Satanic SF like this? <laughs> like, it's it's the same effect. You basically just swap life. It's it's like having an Aegis with no respawn timer. No, well, that's it. Miracle, trying to mop through the middle waves, just buying a little, adding a little bit more pressure onto Team Liquid. Not really going to do that much, however, Team Liquid are going to batten down the hatches to try and survive this OG siege. And OG are waiting for that one opportunity where Team Liquid is just a little bit too far out like that. Uh, <laughs> Moon, four staffing Matumba. That wasn't Matumba being out there by choice. And he's got no way back in when that kind of stuff happens. Yeah, this is a very tense, tense situation. I mean, we saw Matumba Man get dunked. And he didn't cast the BKB. I, we could have easily seen him just like panicking and pop it there. I mean, I would have that in the back of my mind. It's like, oh, well, that happened to me earlier. I don't want it to happen again, but he's staying calm in this situation. Is this really the position we could be getting into where OG just try and take a fight and crit takes the racks? Oh, that could throw that down could the Agonives, Mass Serpent Wards. He's like, he's what, 1200 gold? Oh, if this game goes in like 30 more minutes, we're going to see Necro books going in, refreshers on Shadow Shaman. That, that'll that be wonderful. Oh, good old days. Fly, Fly should get a full staff of his own. Because maneuverability is still like such a huge way to win this fight. You have that moment where Gyrocopter gets four staffed out, you get the double four staff to push him even further out. Like, Moon is stopping also the Razor from killing him, picking up a Ghost Scepter. He can turn this into an E-Blade with these low BKB timings uh, for Team Liquid. Like, you're already down to five seconds on Matumbaman. He can just E-Blade charge the Gyrocopter after the BKB has worn off. Even though normally it is the Earthshaker who's the one initiating, so... The likelihood of that situation is a little bit lower, and it is the Daedalus for the SF. He's He's got enough money for the whole thing, but he will sacrifice his buyback if he, if he gets it. Here's to see what no tail is going for. He he is like basically a, a glass cannon right now. He has no survival survivability items besides the blink dagger. I mean, as long as he just blinks in and then omni slash, his, his job seems like it's done. Sure, healing ward will definitely help out in these team fights, but it asks it asks the question then like, do you even want to get another item on him? Leave him the way he is, Moon. Oh, they see Fader. That observer ward sees it all. So the fissure will connect. It uh, doesn't fully block, so Fader can get back out if he needs to. Like, if you want to feel a little bit more secure with Notal, you could sell the Mask of Madness to pick up something like the Scotty, like we were talking about for the SF. Same kind of scenario for him, but the Mask of Madness, like, if your only objective is, it's almost like a, what, we want to say like the Venomancer ulti, blink him, throw the ulti out, get it off. If that's all Notal is really good for, or all you really want from him at the start of the fight, then Mask of Madness still makes sense to hold on to. Yeah, he doesn't really have enough for Refresher, which is an amazing item on Juggernaut. But since he doesn't really have an Ags, doesn't really have that much 
like a battle fury or anything doesn't have mana regen or any of that. You can't really have a double abyssal, a double juggernaut omni slash. Oh, they're so pinging out. They didn't realize Fly ran down south, or it was Fly himself that broke the smoke of Fader. The bottom lane's also pushing in too hard, and they do not want to find a miracle right now. That's a double damage SF. He will destroy Roshan. Yep, now they're just waiting for them to go back. They know they have to defend the top lane. They know they have to defend the bottom lane. They're buying out. It's Ascardi over on the Razor. He's got no money for buyback. If we actually check the buybacks right now, it's only Jaro who has a buyback available. If you look towards OG, it's the SF and the Juggernaut, the two big ones. But with the creep wave pushing in through the top, like, Liquid, they can't... They can't wait. Like, Matumpman throws the ulti and instantly runs back down, but that cooldown doesn't stop the creep wave. I... I don't know if you realize that one at all, but now OG, like, they've wasted the time of the, of the uh, double damage, and the Sigil still keeps sitting inside the pit, watching and waiting. Okay, we have this huge item pickup on Kuroki now, too. Like, this arm for six seconds, if he can hit the ulti on one of these cores, it could be very game-changing, especially if the BKB is, is worn out. I wonder yeah. at this point if it's even worth it for OG to go anywhere near Roshan. Like, just, just split push this. Like, until you see three players from Liquid, like, camping inside their own base, don't go near Roshan just because of the threat this this ET poses. They've seen it with the Observer Ward, so they understand what Koro has got. What they don't see, however, is where Jirax is currently sitting. They're gonna force staff him down. They came down here to chat to scout it for the wards, but it's elsewhere. Mind control. Well, oh. no tell. They know he's there. The Weevil give him the vision, and now the Omni Slash catching both mind control and Kura. Can he get the Oat? No, Rock. No, he cannot. It's already two kills going the way of OG, and probably a lot more where that came from. Miracle beating into Fader. Fader has to 140 damage, but he cannot sustain. He cannot stay here. So two heroes down for Liquid. No buybacks available on both of them. OG didn't even have to use the Mass Serpent mods for this, so this looks like it's approaching the end. They'll jump in for Roshan, they'll take the Aegis and Cheese, and then just take the bottom lane. Actually, the Aegis and Cheese don't even help the cause. I mean, I think you still drop the, the Blink Dagger now. Oh, he's going to drop the Mass the Madness mask. instead. Either, either one is really good. Wait, yeah, hang on. Hey, Alright, that's... Um, <laughs> Alright. Uh, uh, no towel, did you forget your shoes? Uh, he's going to get the Aegis, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just... It's just... That was kind of weird. He could have just dropped the. Uh, uh, he he kind of lost ten seconds there. Uh, I thought he. I, I. He had to have thought he. Bl he picked it up. If that's the only reason he would have done what he did. That's a little too eager with the blink. So now they've got twenty seconds. It's still enough that you just send no tail to the front lines and he takes the tower. Miracle's doing it himself. Like, he doesn't even need help. The Kree Way push in through the mid, so there goes your tower. The Divine Rapier has now been purchased by Matubum, and the Courier is bringing it back. They're going to need this damage if they are going to stop this fight. Then stop this push from OG. The four star pushing Fader forward, but Nontu are out of position. He's still okay. When they get through the Mass Serpent Wards of No Tell, it was the melee ranks that took the damage, but it's not down yet. Tell me, man, how big is your back, man? It's. Oh. Well. I think it'll be snapping at this point. But Liquid can stall this out. Like, you still, you've still got Kuro Spirit. This Astral Spirit plus Stomp just stops the Creep Wave time after time. It's so annoying to play against <laughs> in this situation. They also have the Shards just to clear out the waves too, so both clearing it out and... It's very hard right now for OG to go high ground. Now that you see that the Gyrocopter has that Divine Rape here, so... I, I think it was when we were casting uh, the Dota Pit game and... We're talking about the ability to defend from high ground, and it was the old combination, having the Elder Titan plus the Naga Siren together. So you send the Illusions down to Riptide, and then you send the Spirit down to Stomp, and the Creep Wave just disappears. In this case, you could actually do it almost with, well, not with a Phoenix Dive, but like, you've still got Shards, and you've still got Spirit. You can take out the Creep Wave before it reaches the high ground, but only on the bottom lane. You're still fighting up against Supers in the mid and the top. So you need a little bit more than that. If, if OG had known what we know, <laughs> They could have won the game by now, just because we know that the Elder Titan and the Phoenix are dead. We're dead. And then if they just went, just went for the Raxes, they could have ended the game. But they probably had a good idea, considering they did see the like the Refresher orb up as well as the Aghanim Scepter. So they'd have a good idea. But it almost feels like right now OG just playing the safe game. Like don't yes, screw up. To... Like that's it. One game away, and you're you're in the finals. It's their game to lose. 
Like, it really is their game to lose right now. Their advantage is over 12k. The experience is up, but it's, it's the lane advantage, it's the positional advantage, it's all the items. The Aghanims is done on the Shadow Shaman. They've got the big wars, they've got the E-Blade done on Moon. They can stop the attacking Razor. All they have to do is just like start the initiation. If they get the BKBs off, great. Moon four stars back out, or Yule sets himself up. Like he buys himself half of the duration he requires of the, of the BKBs to then come back down again and throw out the E-Blade. So they jump forward, Miracle out very, very far. Nozel's also in the middle of this fight, just spinning and attacking. He just wants to force out the Megas. He knows he's so low, and now the Omnisan with the Shallow Grave. He jumps up, but G-Rex's Ghost Set will soak up so much of this. And OG, they lose three, but they get the racks. So the Aegis Immortal will burn now. Buyback to Revival only for the SF. But with Juggernaut back to all the living, he'll go down. Down for a hundred seconds. You're up against Megas, you're being forced on multiple lanes. And Crit's the sole survivor. Okay. All in mid. Let's go. That's it. That's all Let's you can go. do. Like, you're running a Rapier game for a reason. But Tumbleman's damage, it kicked in at the perfect time. What is Fada doing? He needs to stay back. Uh, what is Jirax doing? He's dying. <laughs> I, I, we, he'll, he'll lose the aggro for a moment. He, he, he won't. He won't die to this. He's forced. Is he? No, he he's just earned. he's just keeping the creep wave back. So OG, like, can like can they defend this with just the SF? I know the Juggernaut's got buyback too, so it's not as bad. But yeah. they need that Earthshaker. Earthshaker still has Echo Slam. The biggest thing is they don't have the tier two top, so they can't actually go for Megas themselves. They kind of have oh, to they, go they're all going, in. They're going this for GG. Has to be a GG play. They've got to go for the for the tier four towers. Just attack the range racks on the way through and just go for it. Dazzle's coming up. The SF and Jugger will have to buy it back. The Kree waves are still pushing in through the other lanes. Like it's really difficult for Liquid to do this, but they're gonna give it a shot. It's onto the tier four towers. It's dropping low, fortification still available, here comes the Juggernaut, the ES, he's up, remember that Echo Slam, the SF now fires back, they're ready to fight, they find Jirax, it's the Abyssal Blade, and they burn through the Ghost Scepter, he'll snowball for protection, jumping a little bit closer, punching up Notel, and Notel into his oh spin, the Shallow Grave will barely man. keep him alive at the very end, but the Fortress is still going down, they've still got the damage, the stop oh, oh, the Kree waves are pushing the other side! And it's going to be the momentum oh. of OG that take the game. Liquid were running for it, but they were forced into the fight. And we've got our position right now. We're Team Liquid. Wow. They came so close, but OG will end up 2 zeroing them here in the competition and securing themselves the first grand final spot of the defense. Wow.